And we are back here at 7.35 a.m. on KFYO Mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin. And now with us appearing live is Mr. Eddie McBride, who's the uh, the head man, so to speak, at the uh, Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. Going to take a little bus ride today, are you? Yes, there, we are, Dave. Mr. Matt, McBride? good morning. Happy New Year. Good to see you and kind of downgrading the show after your first half hour there. After Well, with, uh, it's Dr. hard Rolo. to follow Dr. Rolo. You yeah, know. yeah. She She's doing a great job to LSD. We really are happy to have her where she's at. Yes, sir, we're going to Amarillo today. Uh, after the mayor's state of the city presentation at, l- at lunch, we're going to go up to Amarillo in this afternoon. He's got a busy day. He does. He's going to go up there with us as well and meet with Major, uh, Mayor Nelson, uh, Ginger Nelson up there. But what we're doing today is Amarillo Matters is a political action committee that has been formed up in Amarillo to help now their major function is to oversee both the legislative advocacy efforts and lobbying and and uh, representing Amarillo's interest in the Texas Tech Veterinary School. So we're going up this afternoon to have a joint news conference with them to celebrate the support of of Lubbock uh, and Amarillo and the Lubbock Chamber Political Action Committee is uh, uh, going to give our Lubbock Chamber PAC is going to give Amarillo Matters PAC some money to help in their lo- work, lobbying efforts. Uh, work together with them. Yes, sir. And when we've offered to do anything we can from a legislative uh, advocacy yeah. point of we view to very help common them. interest. Very common interest, and it's and it's bigger than just Texas Tech, bigger than just Amarillo and Lubbock and West Texas. I think it's going to be good for all of rural Texas and. And and I think having large animal vets and the program that Tech has developed, I think is a, uh, I, I really do honestly think it's a it's a no brainer, and I think it's one of the biggest projects that Texas Tech has had in quite some time. Mm. Well, and it's not just uh, it's like you said, it's not just West Texas. We're talking about um, the Panhandle of Oklahoma. We're talking about maybe Kansas, New Mexico. I mean, um, this there's just a large area here that needs. That well, needs I, this, the, a big rural area that, yeah, that yeah. needs this. I was surprised at how few vet schools there are in the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Not only a few vet schools, but let me let me give you a few uh, uh, information about Texas alone. In 2017, more Texas students left the state to pursue their education in vet medicine than the number of first-year students enrolled in the state. So more Texas kids left Texas to go to vet school than went to vet school in, in Texas. Wow. And a generation ago, the state, this is really telling, the state's existing veterinary program made eight, met 80% of veterinary workforce demand. Today, it graduates less than one quarter of Texas vet workforce members. So, so the genera- majority of veterinarians <clears throat> are educated outside of Texas. That 75% is correct. according to those. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's a lot of changes that have happened over the year that obviously the current vet school is not meeting all the demand. And not only that, it's not only it's meeting all the demand for Texas alone. There's a lot of other forces, in fact. A lot of folks that graduate in international vet schools, but small animal versus large animal is another key and critical problem that we're facing here is because there's well, just not a large, a large enough number of vet school grads doing large animal veterinary work. And we are right in cowboy country here. Oh, with, my gosh, you're absolutely uh, right. We raise more cows probably than anywhere in the state. Yeah, and see some of these other statistics. You know, we're we're at the epicenter of Texas livestock. Produ- I mean, of livestock production in America, with the highest density of cattle in the country. But Texas ranks last among the ten most populous states for the ratio of cattle to veterinarians. So we just don't have enough vets. Now, there's a lot of other forces at play here. You know, because a lot of these ranchers and farmers have done a lot of their own vet work because obviously you don't have access to vets. But if you have access to vets, I cannot help but think that it will help in the cattle production and, and, and uh, horse, horse uh, work as well. So I, I really do think there is a critical need for this effort. And, and this is probably one of the when, – when Bob Duncan got us involved a couple of years ago, <clears throat> we knew that was going to be important for whatever we could do from the business community to help. And now when Chancellor Ted Mitchell asked, I think it's uh, important for us to help as well. Did you anticipate the pushback that we're getting on this thing? Well, the, the pushback the controversy. is... controversy. Yeah, the controversy is led by the Chancellor of Texas A&M. And I think that's one of the things that uh, why, why does he and the Texas A&M University actually oppose this other vet school? Well, it's going to be competition to, for, for graduates, but it can't be competition for students because obviously I just said that the majority of students that go to vet school in Texas from Texas students go outside the state. 
So, I mean, I think there's a lot of good reasons. Mm. To well, it. and if you're focusing on Fifi, you know, you'll be going to Texas A&M. But if you're focusing on horses, cattle, whatever, you'd probably more go to this new vet school over at Texas Tech. And I just really have a lot of confidence at Texas Tech and the model that they're developing coming from Calgary, something that's already been proved to provide that type of uh, uh, veterinary uh, education and especially what they're doing up in with Amarillo with a, a different approach at how you do vet school with a, a, an attached vet hospital. Mm-hmm. So I think some of the things that's going on in Amarillo is going to be very uniquely adapted to help yeah. West Texas vets. So mm-hmm. we're re- very happy to have a small role to play in this, and we're looking forward to pushing it through the session as much as possible as well. This funding is going to be critical uh, for this, and there's probably going to be opposition. And I know that Senator Perry and representatives – Bur- Bur- Burroughs and Frulo are doing a good job at rallying their peers down in Austin yeah. as well. So I'm very confident that they'll, they'll work very hard at it as well. Well, Connor's wanting to take a break, so let's do that. And then we'll come back and talk more with uh, Eddie McBride, uh, heading the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. News Talk, 95.1 FM, 790 AM. This is KFYO Mornings. Dave King, Matt Martin here on your radio at 745 AM and in the studio with us again is uh, Eddie McBride, the CEO of Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. What um, what else is going on with the chamber? We got Business Expo coming up in January. January twenty fourth. <laughs> Excuse me, January twenty fourth, Thursday, it's Civic Center from ten to four, and it's one of the business to business experiences that we put on that. Uh, that really helps a lot of businesses uh, meet new business people, right. give them a chance to you, tell them about their business. How many you got signed up so far? We're going to have know? close to 200, so we'll have 5,000 people show up at the at the, the Civic Center that day. So a lot of opportunities for people to go and learn about what business opportunities they can reach in the community. So, yep. and, and I literally, over the years, I've been doing this long enough to have a lot of experiences with people who've said that they – from their one day experience of exhibiting at the expo that they could get six months worth of leads for them to follow up yeah. on their business. And you know how important that is for, for folks to go and establish new relations and, and try to get uh, new business. It's so that's pretty important. networking. It, it is, is networking. It is network development at its finest as well. So mm-hmm. uh, business expo does really a good job. So, uh, uh, Christy Weld and, and Allison Cottrell in the office is, uh, doing a good job with the volunteer committee, putting that together. And one thing you will see at the business expo is everything. Yeah, every, I mean from A to Z. Yeah, every, just about. I'm not saying every business what? in in Lubbock of the seven thousand plus storefronts that we have in Lubbock, but you can get a wide variety, like you say. So it's really a good opportunity. And this Thursday night, uh, the tenth of January, we're having our first business after hours of the year, and it's going to be at Prosperity Bank on Avenue Q at their operations annex, and yeah. and that's always a great again a network opportunity for folks to go and meet other people as well. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, so that's great, and of course we start along with everybody else in the state of Texas, watching what's going on down in Austin during the legislative session. That's always worrisome. Yeah, uh, you know it's 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 a uh, kind of scary to to think that you know for 140 days that these folks down in Austin might be helping us, hurting us, or whatever. You know, but it's a uh, we we have a lot of confidence in our West Texas delegation. So real happy about that, you know, and, and uh, Representative Burroughs getting elected to the Republican caucus, I think, was huge. Uh, we had a chance to meet with uh, Dustin and John Frulo with uh, now the Speaker Speaker of the House, Dennis Bonin, a couple of weeks ago. And, and it's going to be interesting to see how all the sausage is being made down in, in, in Austin. $119 billion, an 8% increase over what we had in to the last biennium, so that's that's huge news. Eight yeah. percent, eight percent increase. Yeah. Um, w- I was just wondering about the low price of gas, low price of oil. That's not going to help Texas. No, that did hurt a little bit in its receipts. You know, uh, uh, I mean, they're continue to they're continuing to pump. Oh, I mean, they just they may be making it up with volume. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm pretty sure they they are. Uh, nonetheless, I think. Uh, that's good news, bad news. Good news is we got cheap gas. Bad news is it's cheap oil. You know? We got well, cheap gas. <laughs> and they also, I was I was kind of watching this. Um, they said that they still feel like the average price of crude this year is going to be in the 60 range. Yeah. Right now it's in the high 40s, I think. So, yeah. so they apparently expect 
the price to go up. And it sure doesn't seem to slow be slowing them down any. They're, mm. Man, they're oh my gosh. drilling crazy stories coming out of oh, the Permian Basin. Yeah, area. I just read the last Texas Monthly about, uh, and they had a lot of articles in there about that as well. It's just that uh, it's, a, it's a heck of a game. Mm. I mean, it's creating a whole new sense of problems, uh, uh, opportunities and problems mm-hmm. down in Midland and Odessa, but uh, in, in, in southwest or southeastern New Mexico and and that whole region is just uh, is going crazy, you know. So real, real looking, uh, you know. It really helps the legislature when they have uh, enough money they know going in to do their budget. But it is, it's you know, they that doesn't mean that it's going to be just a, a spending spree either. You know, our our number one concern for this legislative session is Texas Tech vet school funding. Our second concern is the obviously the the public education finance reform, and third is obviously property tax uh, reform. We're, we're uh, interested to see what uh, uh, is going to end up happening with uh, capping property taxes in communities and everything. Do as you think well. it'll so, actually happen? <clears throat> yeah, I think something will happen. I think there, uh, but what I'm worried about is 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 uh, having you know because five percent is rural Texas is not the same as metropolitan Texas. Well, I'd, and I'd. I'd don't know that there's two things uh, one is with with that i don't know that they'll add the rural areas into it it'll probably they'll probably put a cap on how many just like they did with annexation just like what senator perry tried to do last session which mm-hmm. i hope he's successful at happening this time but uh the other thing is i mean even in rural c- communities uh all it does is uh, bring up a vote and so if if you need you know let's say you need that new police car it's going to be a, a big chunk out of the budget you just have to vote. Yeah, but get a vote, vote for it. The vote costs a lot of money too, though. Don't forget, and it ain't oh. cheap putting on an election. Hey. Hey, the larger the community, obviously, the larger the cost. Right. But <clears throat> quick question: yeah. is is the is our government shutdown having any effect that you can see on public businesses? I'll be honest. Um, the, all the conversation that I've had the last couple of weeks. I have not yet heard a single person say they were impacted by the shutdown. <laughs> However, we just talk about the shutdown, and, and I, I haven't asked anybody, are you impacted? You know, if somebody was impacted, you'd think they would say, but I, I personally, of all the conversa- conversations I've had, I have not heard a single Does it business. Does tell you that maybe our government is a little well, too big? So <laughs> the only people no in, that. in Lubbock I can think of would be like maybe TSA agents or something <laughs> like that. They're not going to get a paycheck. And right. I haven't been to the airport over that two period, two week period. Yeah. I haven't talked to anybody down at the the, the federal building, you know. And I'm sure there's a lot of folks down there. So I'm not making light of the fact that it's not a problem. I just personally yeah. do not have any okay. other than what I read. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back for a short segment. News Talk ninety five point one FM seven ninety AM. We are KFYO mornings with Dave King and Matt Martin, and Eddie McBride from the Lubbock Chamber of Commerce. Nice to be down here, Dave, Matt. Thank you all again for letting us come on a monthly basis. And and if anybody needs to contact the Chamber of Commerce, 761-7000 is our telephone number or lubbockchamber.com on your internets, uh, where, wherever you go to use your internet. And then we're at 1500 Broadway downtown. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And look forward to having plenty of conversations. One of the things that we exist on is the ability to talk to business people about business. So, yeah, that's uh, the Wells Fargo building, right? In the Wells Fargo Bottom Center. Floor. Yes, sir. Bottom floor on the east side. and Easy to find. Easy to find. Come in, and we look forward to having conversations. If you need, and uh, business expo tickets, walk in and yeah, go and talk I'll to I'll bring them. some down, I promise. I forgot oh. to bring them today as normal, but I'll bring some down and come down and get them right now because you're going to be paying at the door if you don't get them beforehand. So, mm-hmm. uh uh, come and again, on the, the business expo is, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know what that is. Yeah, it's an exhibition. Uh, it's yeah. a business to business, have, e- business to business you, exhibition. You'll have over 200 business, Lubbock businesses right. that, that are represented there, and they'll be showing you their wares and uh, just uh, you'll, you'll learn something about their business. Yeah, anywhere from anywhere, a any, lot of retail opportunities, but you're talking about, you know, copy machine, uh, menu, uh, sell, salespeople, uh, you're talking about our cable companies. Here's uh, anything that you can have. Uh, there'll there'll be plenty of opportunities to meet just about anybody that you want to. And one of the things that uh, that I always liked about it, there's always bargains. They give away. They give away oh, yeah, a lot of sure. uh, samples. That's, that's a hook to get you to come to their booth, which is boothmanship. You and, know, and they'll have uh, specials. <laughs> yep, business mm-hmm. expo specials that yep. you can take advantage of. 
Yep. And, and again, it's something that can last a long time for you and your business to come and have a chance to see them. So uh, take advantage of some of the businesses in town that really want to do business with you. Mm-hmm. And that's coming up uh, the 20th? 20... 24th. Thursday, January 24th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. One day. In the Civic Center. That is correct. Yes, sir. One full day. And there'll mm. be some educational seminars that same day as well. A couple of them, I see Connor saying we don't have a much more. I don't yeah. have enough time to explain. But uh, lobbychamber.com, look at Business Expo, or call yeah. us and we'll give you information. Thank well, you, guys. Eddie, once again, uh, Eddie McBride from the Chamber of Commerce, an award-winning Chamber of Commerce. We're proud of our chamber here in Lubbock. Well, thank you very much, and Dave. You do, Matt, you're doing a you. great job. Thank you, and happy New Year to you guys. Okay, we'll be back with uh, more after this.